Hello, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about editing photos and taking your photography to a different level. I'm going to show you how you can make basic adjustments in a photo editing program, Adobe Lightroom. Lightroom is easy to use and can transform boring images into amazing photographs. Lightroom does cost money, so I'm also going to show you Polar, which is free and very similar to Lightroom. The controls and the layout look almost exactly the same. Before we go over all the adjustment sliders, we need to talk about white balance and color temperature. Understanding these two things is not only a key component to taking better photos, but also making sure your photos that you edit on your computer turn out looking more professional. Different light sources have different colors. The light from the daytime sun has a different color than the light from a lamp in my living room. As you can see, outside light is actually pretty blue, and regular light bulbs put off a yellow light. So then why isn't everything all blue when I look out my window? Our eyes automatically adjust to lighting conditions. When I'm outside and I see a white object, my brain sees a white object. Even when the sun is making that white object blue. When editing a photo using either Lightroom or Polar, you're going to be able to artificially change the white balance. When you took the photo, the camera needed to know what color actually is white. Your camera does have an automatic setting for white balance. It usually works pretty well. The auto setting on your camera may not always give you a perfect white balance, but it should put you right in the ballpark. But sometimes your camera's auto setting isn't going to work properly. You probably have taken a few photos that have turned out really blue or really yellow. When that happened, your camera had an incorrect white balance. Don't worry, it's easy to fix in our editing program. Just look for the white balance adjustment slider. I call it a slider because you can change the color temperature of the photo by sliding it to the left to make your photo more blue or sliding it to the right to make your photo more yellow. You can even use a preset. You just select a light source. Now when doing this, you just use your eyes and you judge which one is best. This photo was shot in the daytime, so I'm gonna pick daylight. And it looks pretty good. I usually start with auto, and then I use that temperature slider to fine tune it. As I said earlier, if you drag the slider to the left, you're adding more blue to your photo. To the right, you add more yellow. So adding more yellow to the photo that looks a little bit too blue will balance it out, giving you a better looking white balance. You can also use a color picker and select something in the photo that you know is white and that will change your white balance for you. The color picker looks a little like an eyedropper. This is the basic control panel for Lightroom. All these settings will accomplish the same tasks no matter which editing program you use, even the ones on your phone. So we're using Lightroom today, but it might look exactly the same in a different program. So up at the top, we really need to only know about the library and develop tabs. The library is where we go to import the photos into Lightroom or browse the photos that we already have imported. Okay. So I'm in the library and find the photo that I want to edit. Now you go to the develop tab. This is where we go to edit our photos. On the right side of the screen, we have all of the tools that we'll be using for our editing. You can see the white balance on the top. And then below that, we have all of the sliders that we can use to improve the photo's brightness and other fine tuning adjustments. Let's talk more in detail about each slider and then what they do. All right, so we already talked about white balance, so let's go on to exposure. Exposure is the overall brightness of your photo. It lightens or darkens everything inside your photo. When you increase the contrast, you're making the dark spots in the photo darker and the bright ones even brighter. An easy way to understand contrast is um, imagine we have a black and white image. If you increase the contrast, we're getting rid of all the grays in the photo and making everything more white and black. Decrease the contrast and we're making those blacks gray. Highlights are the super bright areas, like in the window. If you lower the highlights, you can actually see outside a little bit better. The shadow slider will take care of shadows. I use it to brighten up areas like that chair in the background that's pretty dark. With the white slider, you can take care of gray areas that are supposed to be white. Like that coffee table. It's supposed to be white, but the lighting in the room is making it slightly gray. 
Basically, you're making the whites a little bit whiter. The black slider is the exact same concept, but for the dark areas. You're just making the dark spots even blacker. Or if you raise it, you're making them a less intense black. All of this control should help you get a nice exposure on your photo. Now let's look at the next box of controls. Clarity brings out the detail and texture. It's gonna bring out contrast in the midtones. Now you're gonna see more lines and more edges. I personally like clarity when I'm shooting photos of buildings, but not really if I'm shooting photos of a person. It's gonna bring out wrinkles and lines in their face. Vibrance and saturation deal with your colors. They both affect how colorful your photos are but vibrance only affects the colors that are a little bit muted. So the colors that are already saturated won't be affected. Saturation, on the other hand, will make all of your colors even more colorful. This is our tone curve. Now don't be scared, it's not that complicated. I use this as a little bit of a fine tuning instrument. We'll be altering our highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. You pick a point on the line and then you drag up to brighten and then down to darken. The bottom of the line are for the darker areas, while the top right is for the brighter. Just a little adjustment is good enough. I like to make a little tiny slight S shape. This little S curve that I just made will add a little contrast to my photo. This is something that might take a little bit of practice, but you will eventually love it. Those are the basic adjustments in Lightroom. Now let's look at Polar. Polar is free and is available on your computer or on your phone. And as you can see, the adjustment sliders look just like Lightroom's. We have the temperature slider, exposure, highlights, shadows, clarity, vibrance, and so on. On the left, we have the looks presets, just like in Instagram. These are not a good idea to use for real estate photos, so we're not gonna talk about them today. Now that we know what the controls do, Let's edit a photo. So this is what Lightroom usually looks like, but I do have a before and after photo set up here so you can see all the changes that I make. So before on the left and then the after on the right. One thing that Lightroom has that Polar does not are these brush adjustments. Just click the button that looks like a makeup brush. So basically it's like I'm picking a paintbrush and then I'm going to paint my photo to add my adjustments. I'm gonna pick exposure and I'm gonna to try to brighten up all these areas. So I'm gonna paint over here the sections that I think I need to brighten up. Okay, and I'm just painting that whole left side of the photo. You can change the size of your brush by moving the size slider. The reason I didn't just raise the exposure slider is because I didn't want to brighten the entire image. I wanted to avoid the windows, so I am painting around them. And you can see it brightened up quite a bit. There are a few sections on this photo that I accidentally went over, like uh, the windows and stuff. I did not want to brighten those up. So I'm going to pick the erase area. You can see it right there, erase. And I'm going to paint over the windows and get rid of the areas that I painted earlier by accident. And those will darken that up a little bit because if we add more exposure to windows, it's just gonna be overblown and overexposed. Looks good. Now, another thing what I'm gonna do is just go over and do a regular adjustment on my shadows and brighten up some of the corners and the areas that are a little bit darker. And that photo looks pretty good. So just a few adjustments and I really improved that photo. All right, here is an exterior of a house. This is a pretty good photo. There's just a few things that I can do to, to brighten the whole thing up. First of all, let's change the color temperature a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue because it looks slightly yellow to me. Okay, and now there are some dark areas, so I'm gonna hit that shadow slider, maybe put it up to like 20 or so and brighten up some of the shadow areas. And then I'm gonna lower the highlights. We really wanna bring out those clouds and all the blueness because it's a little bit overblown. And now for the clarity and the vibrance. Now let's hit that clarity. I'm gonna try another like 20 or so. Really bring out the edges and the lines in the photo. And then we're gonna hit up the vibrance to add a little bit more color. And here's the tonal curve. 
And if you want, you can uh, do some more fine tuning adjustment. I'll skip that right now. And here's a cool thing. It's a hue in the saturation sliders. I can pick a particular color and change its hue and change its saturation. So I'm gonna pick the green and I can change its saturation and hue. The grass was looking a little bit dead, not much. So I'm gonna change that hue and then boost up the saturation a tiny bit. Now it's important never to go too much because we don't want anything to look unnatural. Here is the noise reduction slider. Now since I hit that shadow slider earlier, I probably added a little bit of grain. So I can move the noise reduction slider up maybe 10 and get rid of some of that grain. Now we're going to go and we're going to paint the house with our brush. And we're going to add a little bit of a higher exposure and some more clarity to the front of the house. The front of the house is slightly dark, so if I just paint over some spots and we'll add a little bit of brightness to it. And we're just gonna do a nice rough painting here. It doesn't need to be that precise. And it's already looking pretty good. We really brightened up that house. All right, everything looks great. Now remember, you can change the size of your brush or erase anything that you accidentally went over. When you're done painting, go click the Done button. Sorry, I have it off screen here. Um, let's take a look at the before and after. You can see the before on the left is a little bit duller. In the right, uh, we got those colors really popping. You can see the grass and the clouds. We're gonna add a little bit of an S-curve to our tonal line here. Just add a little bit more contrast. And yeah, that looks fantastic. As you can see, we can just take a couple minutes, do a few changes on our photo, and really just brighten it up and make it look a whole lot better. Now, editing photos can be a little bit daunting, but with practice, it's gonna get really easy and you'll be able to edit a photo in just minutes. When you're done editing your photo, you need to export the image. In Polar, look for the Export button on the top left. Pick the quality that you want your photo to be. Let's do 100% and then click download. It will download to your computer inside your downloads folder. In Lightroom, we need to go back to our library tab to export our finished photo. So click the library button. The export button is on the bottom left. In Lightroom, you get to pick where you want it to be saved to on your computer. Click export to save the photo. So go ahead and download Polar, or you could try Lightroom if you want. It's a fantastic program and it will really improve your photos. All right, well, thank you for joining us for another Social Agent Today video blog post.